Now set, Bill? Yep. All right. With a gentle push, Gardner Ellis shoves off on another adventure. He's the top guide for Wilderness Connection, an outfitting offshoot of the Duluth Pack Store. His specialty is classic camping and canoe trips throughout the Midwest. The trip like this on flat water is pretty, uh, pretty simple and pretty basic. I, bas I don't do trips that are, are white water, basically because of the wood canoes that you can see. And, and a lot of people go that don't have the skills. So it's kind of more of a vacation for people than anything else. On this trip, Gardner's friend, Bill Larson of Bayfield, is along to check out the spring fishing, while Dave Solstrom and Gretchen Erdman enjoy a break from their jobs in Duluth. Gardner says there's no better place to unwind than Wisconsin's Namakagan River. It's perfect for taking people out in wooden canoes and, and showing them, showing them uh, you know, traditional skills. Uh, sandy bottom on the river is easy on the bottom of the canoe. Uh, it's pretty. A lot of wildlife here. It's one of my favorite rivers. The Namakagan is a natural haven for people who like some wild in their wilderness, and yet it's close to home. It's managed and protected as part of the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway. Thanks to the Park Service, access is easy and the campsites are clean. The elements of Gardner's classic camping style include lots of canvas. An overnight trip for six people requires several Duluth Pack backpacks stuffed to the brim. I've been using Duluth Packs for well, ever since I started canoeing, 25 years, and I'm sold on them. You know, they're, they're really rugged, they're made well, uh, they'll last you a lifetime. Gardner's vintage tents are collector's items, and they're close to his heart. He says with the right accessories and a little experience, they're nice and easy to set up. These tents are 30 years old, and they're very functional. They're lightweight, like I said. Uh, Four-person tent, which is behind us right now, weighs around 15 pounds. Uh, a good nylon tent with poles weighs that much for four, for four people. They fit the environment that we're using them in. Uh, it's more quiet than a nylon. It doesn't flap in the wind and things like that. It's darker. You get to sleep later in the morning if you would like to sleep in. So uh, uh, they're, they're nice. That's a good sized tent, don't you think? Another element, and perhaps Gardner's favorite, is his fleet of wood and canvas canoes. They're almost 18 feet long and weigh around 65 pounds. Beautiful to look at and functional too. He says they add an authentic flavor to this timeless mode of travel. It's a tradition. It's classic. Um, it's uh, skills that were practiced generations ago, maybe by your father or grandfather. They might have used the same things when they went camping. And I've always been fascinated by the the old way of life and I'm not saying there's any scientific reason why it is better uh, I just I'm more comfortable with it. His comfort shows in the way he paddles casually guiding his friend past eddies rich in promise. Okay yeah, Sean. There you go Steve. You got one? Yeah. Good for you. Trout and bass are known to lurk in the deep pools along the riverbanks. In season, a smallmouth bass would make a nice meal. But tonight, it's hamburger cooked over an open campfire under Gardner's supervision. This is a traditional trip, and I, could, I suppose I could be classified as a traditional guide. So in that sense, I pretty much do most of the work. And, it's, and if someone wants to pitch in and help, I more than welcome it. And if someone is very interested in learning how to uh, do a very variety of paddle strokes or learning how to use a setting pole or set up a tent or tie a tump line on a canoe, I'm more than willing to show them how to do it. <laughs> it's nice to, to be with someone that takes all the responsibility to do everything and still allow you to have your own freedom you know, in as much as you can with a group of, with a group of people. There are limits always that you can do that, but uh, I've been on a 
a lot of different trips with him and it's been great. Gardner is a self-taught guide. He grew up without a lot of exposure to the outdoors. Now, through guiding, he hopes yeah, to share his right accumulated here. wisdom with others. I was just really interested in, in introducing people to traditional uh, ways of go, to go camping and traditional methods and woodcraft. And uh, that's where I get my pleasure out of, is uh, being able to practice these skills and show people these skills of, of uh, things they would have never even thought, you know, like taking a, a setting pole on a canoe trip. Uh, that's more of a, a tool that they use out in east in Maine. Most people in Minnesota don't even know what it's used for. And once people come on these trips and they see how functional the equipment is and how, you know, dual purpose that it can uh, serve, uh, they're kind of uh, enlightened, I should say, maybe. It's kind of nice to, to keep a tradition going that was the whole way of uh, transportation and living for centuries and to see somebody that's actively interested in keeping that up and not just having a boat like it sitting in his garage and actually trying to introduce people to his boat. Anyone can bounce a rubber boat off, a, off rocks in a rapids. I mean, anyone can do it. But to be able to, to navigate your wooden canoe uh, through a series of drops and shallows, uh, it really gives you a good sense of, of having a skill, you know, possession, possessing a skill. Judging by the smile on Gardner's face, he enjoys his connection to the wilderness as much as he enjoys introducing others to the wonders of classic camping.